Hi. Um, when you go to renewable energy conferences, exactly like this one, people talk about solar, and then they talk about wind. And if you're here in the Nordics, most people know of hydro as well. But what I want to do today is introduce you to a great complement to these energy sources because they have their limitations. Solar power, well, it works when the sun is shining. Wind, when the wind is blowing. And also there's that issue of not wanting to have it in your own backyard. Um, and hydro. Well, you need mountains and you need water. So I want to introduce you to heat power. Heat power can be divided into two areas. Geothermal heat power and industrial heat power, or waste heat recovery. So geothermal heat power is the energy that's found beneath our feet. It's the energy coming from the core of the Earth. We have, it's like a sun inside the Earth with heat just radiating out. Heat that you can actually utilize and turn into electricity. And this has been done for many, many years, but typically around the tectonic plates because you need really high temperatures, such as two or 400 degrees. But if you could use, say, 100 degrees, then you could do this in much larger parts of the world. So the other part of heat power is waste heat recovery, or industrial heat power, I sometimes call it. More than 50% of the world's energy is wasted as heat. Heat that's just dumped out into the atmosphere heat that you can actually use and turn into electricity. This is ship engines, manufacturing processes. So what if you could turn all of this heat, the geothermal heat, the waste heat, into electricity? Well, that's the reality of Climon's heat power unit. So Climon is a product company. We produce this two by two by two meter machine that turns hot water into electricity. You plug in hot water and cold water in the back, and out comes enough electricity to power 250 Swedish homes. So that's a lot of power in a quite small machine. One of these boxes costs about 350,000 euros, and it can save up to 900 tons of CO2 each year. We've gone with a modular and standardized approach. And why is that good? Well, the obvious one is economies of scale. The more we produce, the cheaper it gets. But it also shortens the time from investment to cash flow. Because typically on the power side, when you're building a power plant, you start, you look at the heat source, and then you go back to the drawing board and your R&D team develops a power plant tailored for this heat source. But with our modules, we can look at the heat source and easily, through an Excel sheet, calculate exactly how many modules we'll need. So we basically need no R&D for each new site. The other good part about this, in terms of financing, is that if anything changes, if you have more hot water, then you can just add more modules. Or if you have less hot water, you can move a module from one power plant to another so your investment isn't lost. So another big advantage, if, apart from the fact that geothermal heat power is a base load, it works 24 seven. The heat in the ground is always there. It doesn't matter if it's night, if it's windy, if it's raining, it's always there. Another big factor in this is that it's small. The footprint. What, if you want to power 9,300 homes, you will have solar panels tightly, tightly packed, covering nine 
10 football fields, or you would have a wind park stretching to the horizon. And with heat power, that would be a building of 900 square meters. So if you have this technology, you can turn hot water into clean electricity. Where do you use it? Uh, climate has chosen to focus on three areas. Geothermal, industrial, and maritime. The company started on the maritime side, and we've been working with Viking Line since 2015 on their cruise ship. Since then, we have gotten orders from Virgin Voyages, Richard Branson's cruise line. Uh, we're installing a module on board uh, Maersk on their cargo ship. And actually last week we got an order from Havila Voyages for cruise ships that will be cruising along the Norwegian coast. Uh, the other area where we've been since 2015 is the industrial side. And we've been working with SSAB since 2015 on their steel plant. Uh, we're also focusing a lot on gensets now, because gensets are these large engines, very similar to the ones you would find on board a ship, but they're land-based. And in many countries, such as the UK and other island countries, they're building power plants based on these engines to balance the growing solar and wind power. Uh, the third area within industrial is manufacturing. Basically, all industrial processes have waste heat. This could be a factory that makes bread. It could be a brewery. It could be a chip factory. So the third area is geothermal. Uh, we have Greenfield, which is basically building small-scale distributed power plants. This is what we've done in Iceland and what we're doing in Japan. We have bottoming cycles, which is recovering the waste heat from high temperature geothermal power plants and turning it into electricity. This might sound like a niche, but just bottoming cycles using the existing flash plants is seven to 8,000 modules for us. The third one, oil and gas. We haven't taken any orders here, but I want to bring it up because if we can get the oil and gas industry to shift into something green, into geothermal, that's the biggest impact we could have as a company. They have all the knowledge you would need to become a geothermal heat power operator. They know drilling, they know geology, they know permitting, they know energy. So I'm gonna give you some examples from reality. Uh, on Iceland in 2019, we got our first geothermal power plant approved by the customer. We've had uptimes over 96%, and we've seen that now that everyone has been able to come to this first power plant, see it work, because seeing is believing in this case, they can start building the next two power plants. And with this great thing about modularity, now that they've started generating a cash flow at this first power plant, they're gonna invest in a better well pump. And with more water, they can add more modules at the same power plant. The same thing we're doing now in Japan. We're building two power plants there. It has been a tough year. Permits are taking a lot of time and a lot of work. Uh, but now we're super excited that we're going to have two power plants up and running in the next couple of months. On the maritime side, it's also been a busy year. Uh, during 2019, we had installations ongoing on board five ships in different areas of the world. And we're really happy that uh, Virgin Voyages' first cruise ship, Scarlet Lady, is now actually out sailing commercially. We've made deliveries to Viking Line's new ship, Viking Glory, showing that they're actually a happy and returning customer. We've started installation on board Maersk, which is our first installation on board a cargo ship. And last week, as I said, we got a new order within the cruise industry. And the maritime industry is a very conservative industry. But now we've been present since 2015. Uh, the 2020 sulfur cap limiting the sulfur emissions from the industry has gone into effect. And we're seeing that the interest is picking up. On the industrial side, the area that I think is going to be 
prioritized and going to be a lot of focus on this year is the Gemset market, reciprocating engines based on, for example, natural gas. Because when you add a heat power module to these engines and these power plants, not only do you uh, increase the energy efficiency, but you also reduce CO2 emissions. And when you do this, the power plant uh, becomes more green. So it gets prioritized on the grid, meaning that the power plant operator can produce electricity for more hours throughout the year. So it's a really good business case from, for the customer. But as you see, we're working in different areas, different parts of the world, and if you're gonna do that, you need good partners, strong partners. So in 2019, we were really happy to announce our collaboration with Breakthrough Energy Ventures. Um, in my opinion, it's probably the best energy investor you can find in the world. Uh, and we're working together with them now on technology development, trying to find ways to lower cost of our product, find new suppliers, ones that we couldn't get in contact with since we were a small Swedish company, and market acceleration because they have a network that's unbeatable and they can help us. Right now they're working a lot with us in Japan, trying to accelerate our way into that market. And they also invested $12.5 million into our financing company, Breakthrough Energy Ventures, or Baseload Capital, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so the financials. What I want to send with you is that we have gone from being a small startup with basically no revenues, no order backlog, to a company that actually has significant net sales. We have a strong order backlog, and we've become an international company with operations in many countries. So climb on can turn hot water into electricity. We have a disruptive patented product. The market, as you see, is close to unlimited. And we have the potential of having a global impact. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. Thank if you. you have not already, please write your questions to Charlotte in the app. And let now, let's see what questions we have already. Uh, this is in Swedish, so I have to do an instant translation. That's okay. Uh, regarding your m recent publicized cooperation with Havila Voyages, could you tell us a little bit more about the, more in detail, about how the work is, in, is uh, and expected deliver delivery yeah. is looking at, looking Absolutely. Like. Uh, so, Havila Voyages is a subsidiary to Havila, which is a large Norwegian company, and they have business in shipping, transport, uh, tourism. And what they've done is that the Norwegian uh, Agency for Transport uh, has given them the rights to cruise between Bergen and Kirkenes, so along the Norwegian coast. And what they want to do is create the most sustainable cruise ships there are. And on these, each of these four ships, they're going to have climb-on heat power units installed. And the ships are being built in Turkey right now. And we're going to deliver modules in 2021 and 2022. So we're going to have to... The first two ships, they're already going to be built when we deliver. So we're going to do a retrofit installation. That means that we're going to put the modules on board and install them while the ship is cruising along the coast. Hmm. And the other two, they're going to have the heat power modules installed when they go out from the shipyard. So if you want to be one, on one of those cruise boats, when will be the first journey? Uh, 2021. 2021. Well, that's yeah. fairly, fairly soon. We have another question. How do you look at this uh, competition situation within heat systems uh, and the development forward? Well, I mean, as I said, heat power, uh, especially geothermal heat power, is a huge market. So on that side, we appreciate competition because that will make us better and there's plenty of room for it. Uh, we do see that there are some competitors that are working on the industrial side, uh, but typically they have lower efficiencies than we do. 
Uh, on the geothermal side, the competitors are large companies that are not looking at power plants our size. These are companies like Ormatum, Turboden, and they're building these huge power plants, so we're not competing against them. We would actually be a complement because we can recover their waste heat. Hmm. Well, wonderful. So let's see if we have any more questions. No, this is good, and we're a good time. So thank you very much, Charlotte Becker, and uh, best of luck with your fantastic work. Thank Warm you. Hand.